I do hope you've come to give the Lord some praise. I said, I do hope you came to give God some praise. I know we've been out of the building for quite some time. That's enough of a reason to give the Lord some praise. For he's kept us for two years, three years, 45 years, 65 years. God is good. Let's just sing this song. How great is our God. Say with me how great is our God, then all will sing how great, how great is our God. Come on, say it. How great, how great is our God. Come on. Say with me how great is our God, and all will sing how great. may not know. Yay. Let's say it to him. How great
somebody in the day. Let's sing it like this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Tell you. Oh, give. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, for he is good. To the Lord, unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy, for His mercy, endure, endure forever. For His mercy, for His mercy, hey, endure forever. Since they're not ready, <laughs> I don't mind keeping praising the Lord. How about that? Right.
Amen. And the people of God said amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Come on, say it like you mean it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Songwriter said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together and give God the best praise you can. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty good God from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same Jesus is worthy to be praised. Come on, shout hallelujah. 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 And thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We welcome you here to St. John's Baptist Church. Amen. And thank God for your presence. Amen. This is our service, our, our first service besides Easter back in the sanctuary. So we're grateful for your presence. We're grateful for your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, one and all. If you will, will you bow your heads for a word of prayer? God, we're grateful and we thank you for this day and we thank you for this time of uh, worship. We thank you for this time of revival. God, thank you for the preacher that has arrived safely, God, and thank you for the word that you have planted within him to bless us today. Thank you for the waiting congregation in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we sit in anticipation for and from you, and we expect to hear a mighty word from you. So, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Move in this place, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this, uh, this evening, our scripture reading comes from the book of Romans. Amen. Book of Romans, Romans chapter 10. Amen. Romans chapter 10, beginning with verse 12. If you would, could you stand with me as we reverence the reading of God's word? Amen. Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 12. 
For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. My brothers and sisters, it's preaching time. Amen. Amen. It is preaching time in the sanctuary. Amen. And we come for no other reason but to give God glory, give God praise, and to hear a mighty word from the Lord. Amen. There's one thing I want to do right before we hear the word and right before we hear from this choir. We have a guest here from Miami, Florida, who shared with us on Sunday, and I certainly wanted to allow her to share one or two minutes with you this evening. Um, she is from First Prestige Insurance Company. Amen. One of the things that we have learned during this pandemic is that um, as much time as we spend preparing to live, we don't spend enough time preparing to transition. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so we want to allow her to come and share um, just one or two minutes. And after she comes, we'll hear from the choir. Uh, well, I'll come back and introduce the preacher. We'll hear from the choir, and then we'll hear a word from the Lord. Great evening, Saints. I'm Joanne Robinson uh, for First Prestige Insurance Group. I am one of the co-owners of the company alongside Jaquila Henderson. Um, again, thank you for having me. I am in the area until tomorrow morning. Some of you we have already reached out to and set appointments to get you guys covered. Remember, you guys, the two main reasons why people don't have life insurance, number one, they don't think they could afford it, or number two, they don't think they qualify. Through our company, we solve for both of these issues. We offer up to $30,000 of immediate protection. Some of you may be placed on a waiting period. Some of you may not. Um, but of course, when it comes to having something as opposed to having nothing, 30000 is a whole lot of money. Um, uh, basically, what we do is we cover everyone, diabetic, cancer, high blood pressure, HIV, AIDS, even incarcerated could get a plan with us. All of these policies will double if, God forbid, you pass away of an accident. We pay out our death claims within 24 hours of getting that necessary paperwork back from your family. That's huge because that means you don't have to assign your current policy over to a funeral home, okay? And you guys know that these policies do not pay immediately. We pay in within, we're paying within 24 hours. We just need to have proof that the, the funeral home has you. We don't even need a death certificate, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Um, this is huge. That will save thousands when that time comes. We provide the casket, the vault, the headstone for $3,500. Headstone, I'm sorry, caskets alone are $3,500 in Miami, Florida. Okay, and that's if you are a standard size individual. So please come see me. I am in the back near the fellowship hall. Um, an average funeral is about twelve to 14000 Through us, you can get one between seven to 10000 which means you do not need a big policy done. I mean, a, a big policy to get it done. You need just enough to make sure you're not a burden to someone or someone's not a burden to you, okay? Make sure you have something outside of work, even if it's not through us. Make sure you are looking for something outside of work because once the job leaves you or you leave the job, you no longer have protection, okay? Thank you so much for your time, and y'all have a blessed evening. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, again, my brothers and sisters, it is preaching time, and I am happy to have my friend and my brother here with us uh, today from Houston, Texas, the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Amen. Listen, we were talking. He's been, he's been coming to us for a long time now, me and uh, Pastor Jeff Bryan, and we're grateful for the opportunity for him to come and to share again. 
I thank God for his presence and thank God for his ministry. Amen, y'all. If you, if you get an opportunity to look at him online or if you get an opportunity to get to Houston, Texas, do not leave without going by Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Amen. They just built a phenomenal new facility on their campus, um, and it is, it is something to behold. And so we're here tonight because he is a preacher of the first magnitude. He going to preach whether we say amen or not, but we know that preaching and praying go together. Amen. The more we pray, the better he's going to preach. Amen. And I, I, I just can't wait. I'm sitting here in, uh, with, with anticipation to hear what thus saith the Lord through him. So after the ministry of music from our music ministry, the next voice we will hear is that of the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Hear ye him. Amen. Well, somebody's got the right idea. Hands together.
The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. That's it. Love that he shows is unconditional. The power. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. Because the love that he shows. The love that he shows is unconditional. Celebrate the Lord today and greatly to be praised. I know that He's good. I know that He's God is great and greatly to and greatly to be praised. The greatness of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love, the love that He shows is unconditional. Stand to your feet and say, greatly to be praised. And greatly to be praised. God is great, say, God, God is, is great. And greatly to And greatly to be praised. Let's take it. Oh, God is great. And he's greatly to be and praised. greatly to be praised. Say, God is great. God is great.
exalted God be the glory for the great things our God has done. I've heard it somewhere recently, and I think it's true, and you may as well think it to be true as well. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. If you know he is, will you give him great praise on a Tuesday night? Come on, give God great praise on a Tuesday night in his house, in his house. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve and how we honor the Lord this night for the wonderful privilege that is ours to gather together in worship, to thank God for his goodness and his grace, to celebrate his grandeur and his glory. On this Tuesday following the triumphant resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, every believer ought to still be excited that we serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. And how we honor the Lord tonight for his goodness. We thank God for this pastor, my beloved brother and friend, Pastor Sean Wallace. Will you help me celebrate him, please? Amen. Our brotherhood and friendship over these years have warmed, has warmed my heart, and I'm grateful to you, sir, for the awesome privilege that you've granted me to share with the St. John Church tonight and to share in this experience of worship with all the saints who gather herein. To all of the reverend clergy, God bless you, my sisters and brothers in the facility of preaching. I thank God for you and for your presence tonight and your prayer support. To this singing aggregation, God bless you, each one. This music ministry has blessed us tonight. We thank God for what you have shared with us. I was delighted as we were walking into the church to hear them lifting their voices in praise to God. And from that moment until this, they have blessed us. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your ministry of music tonight. And to all who walk by faith and not by sight, it's good to be in church. Uh, elders, where I came from, said it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. They said, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Anybody glad about it? I just want to make sure I'm in the right house. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. There's a word from the Lord tonight. If you have your Bibles, I invite your attention to the New Testament gospel as recorded by the writer Luke. I don't move too swiftly past the Lenten season. I like to tarry there for a while. Uh, Pastor Brown and I were talking in the office before coming out. Everybody, Pastor Wallace was saying it, it wore us out. It was just tiring. And the Lenten season, Holy Week can wear you out. But I like lingering in the experience. I like remembering what the Lord has done. And I was meditating on a passage of scripture that I want to share with you tonight from that last week of the Lord's life. Don't mean to go back in time, but there's a word that, that seems to grip me, arrest me, and won't let me go. It's found in the New Testament gospel as, as recorded by the writer Luke at chapter 22. The New Testament Gospel of Luke at chapter 22, we'll begin our reading at verse 31. The New Testament Gospel of Luke at chapter 22, beginning with verse 31, and I'm reading tonight from the New International Version of the Holy Word of God. And this is what it says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you all as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. That's enough, amen. Praise God for his holy word. You may be seated even in the presence of our good and gracious God, Simon. Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, old King James Version says, when you converted, strengthen your brothers. For the time that is ours to share together tonight, I want to simply talk from the subject, the sifting of the saints. The sifting of the saints. Pastor Wallace, I, I surmise that the majority of us who have been in relationship with the Lord for some period of time, have a strong desire, yes, a will to please the Lord. I submit, I suggest that best, based upon the 
duration of time we've been in fellowship, in relationship with God. The majority of believers, the majority of the saints truly want to please the Lord, want to honor the Lord, want to serve the Lord with gladness. I know we live in a hyper-consumer culture. I know that there are a lot of people who just want to get theirs and never return anything to anyone else. But there's still a remnant. There's still a group of brothers and sisters who know that we've been so abundantly blessed by God. And we want to show the Lord just how much we appreciate him for all that he has done for us. There's a saint in the sanctuary tonight who can testify as I look back over my life and see all the many things that God has done for me, all the ways God has made, all the doors God has opened, all the doors God has closed, <laughs> all the provisions God has granted, and all the things God has prevented. I just want to serve him till I die. I want to I serve him till I see him for myself. Those old saints where I came from back in Chicago, they used to sing that song that I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I have a funny feeling and a sneaking suspicion that most of us who love the Lord, most of us who recognize how good the Lord has been to us, most of us who are in relationship with the Lord, want to serve the Lord, want to show to the Lord just how much we appreciate him. And we choose to be used by the Lord in the building of the kingdom of God, wherever we may be called upon to do so. And so I bring this for our consideration tonight because as we look at Luke chapter 22, the primary person who is before us is this brother by the name of Peter. And Peter, to be sure, is one of those unique individuals in the kingdom of God, one of those unique individuals in that 12 group of brothers uh, that Jesus chose to walk with him for that three-year ministry. And I'm intrigued that Jesus would choose him in the first place because he's one of them sometimey brothers who's on again, off again. You know, sometimes he's real spiritual, other times he's real carnal. There's some people in the church who know something about that because... You know that there can be days when you're real spiritual and there can be the same day when you're real carnal. We all know that we're on again, off again. We're sometime. There are about three people in the sanctuary who are always super spiritual. I mean, you always on cloud number nine with Jesus. It's you and the Lord all day, every day. But for the rest of us who are here, for the 99.9% .9 of us who are here, we can testify what I would do good evil is always present I'm, I'm sometimes up I'm sometimes down I'm spiritual for a season and uh, yeah I can be carnal if you push me if you rub me the wrong way I know how to tell you where to go and how to get there I'm real clear on how to revert to my pre-conversion days I know I may be delivered but I haven't forgotten come on is there anybody in the church today who can testify you have two individuals warring within you and tonight I'm drawn to the apostle Peter because he is the one who is before us tonight who will be used by the Lord. He chooses to be used by the Lord. He loves the Lord with his whole heart. He is sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is one who understands quite clearly who Jesus is and what the Lord Jesus is able to do. He, to be sure, was the only one who failed, or rather who passed the pop quiz in Caesarea Philippi. Bible readers will remember there was a pop quiz given by Jesus to the disciples disciples when they were in Caesarea Philippi Jesus said whom do men and women say that I the son of man am and the other disciples said well some of them say you're John the Baptist or Jeremiah or Elijah or one of the prophets and after those erroneous answers were given Jesus asked them well who do you say that I am and only Peter he is the only one according to the recorded scripture Matthew chapter 16 Peter was the only one who said oh, I'm real 
real clear on who you are. You are the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the Messiah. You're the one sent to save, sent to redeem, sent to bring us back in right relationship with God. And Jesus responds to him, yeah, good job, man. You have passed the pop quiz. Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I will say unto you, I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Here's the catch catcher. He said, listen, upon this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Catch it, church family. Don't miss it. Jesus says, listen here, you are Peter, Petros in the Greek. It is a stone. It's a solid foundation, a little rock. You are Peter. And upon this rock, the rock of identification, the very fact that you know who I am and you can properly identify me, I'm going to use you to build my church. Somebody just missed a good place to say amen because it seems to suggest the scripture does that you do not have to know the Hebrew from the Greek to be used by God. You do not have to even know the Old Testament from the New Testament to be used. You don't need to know Chronicles from Corinthians to be used by God. But if you can properly identify Jesus, somebody can testify he will use you for his glory. Can I find 12 people in here who can testify? I may not have been to them schools them preachers been to, but I do know who Jesus is and I can tell you he's a way maker when you need a way made. He's a storm tamer. When a storm is brewing in your life, somebody can identify Jesus. He says, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Now I can use you, Peter, to build my church. The fact that you know who I am makes you a prime candidate for use in the kingdom of God. Now, that's Matthew chapter 16. That's verses 19 and 20 and all those verses surrounding there from 13 to 19 to be sure. But by the time we get to Luke chapter 22, which is our text for tonight, we're at the last night of the life of Jesus. And when they have eaten the Lord's Supper, that last supper, they have shared one with another. They have broken the bread and they have drunk the wine. Then Jesus looks at Simon Peter and he says, Simon? Simon, Satan has asked to sift all y'all like wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. It didn't come through the way I needed it to. Rewind, press play. They have now come to the last night of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're now a few weeks, months, years away from Matthew chapter 16. We're in Luke chapter 22, and the rubber's about to meet the road. Jesus is about to be a march from judgment hall to judgment hall. The kangaroo court is about to be enacted and Jesus before they leave that upper room has to get some stuff straight. He said hey man I know you think you know who I am. You answered correctly back there in Caesarea Philippi but I need you to know something now. Satan is coming to get you. Yeah. Satan has asked to sift you like wheat and this my friends is intriguing to me because it seems to suggest that no matter how spiritual you are, no matter how saved you profess to be, no matter how many Bible verses you can quote, no matter how many times you pray toward the east, there will be some seasons in your life where demonic devastation is coming to get you. Yeah. Is coming to get you. Satanic agitation will be your lot in life. Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Don't you think you can get away from it just because you've been close to me? You're even in the big three of disciples, Peter, James, and John. But even though you're real close to me, it does not mean you can escape the reality that demonic devastation is headed in your direction. Church family, this intrigues me because it's seems to suggest that all of us will have to deal with some sifting season at some point in our lives. 
Did you hear what I just said? Sifting. That's an agricultural term. That sifting thing. That's when all of the farmers with the, 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 the garners of wheat would take the wheat out onto the threshing floor. They'd shake out the impurities. They'd throw it up in the air. The good wheat kernels would be gathered in bundles while the chaff, which was good for nothing, would just fly away. Wouldn't have to be worried about that anymore. They caught it right here. Let me make sure everybody else catches up. I said when they wanted to sift the wheat, they'd take it out onto the the threshing floor, shake out the impurities, toss it up in the air. The good wheat would get gathered together in bundles. The chaff, which was good for nothing, would just fly away. Wouldn't have to be worried about that anymore. I see that about 85% of the room gets it. They're 15 looking at me like, huh? And so let me try it one more time just to make sure that we have 100% class participation. When they wanted to sift the wheat, they take it out onto the threshing floor, shake out the impurities, toss it up in the air. The good wheat would be gathered together in bundles and the chaff, which was good for nothing, would fly away. You wouldn't have to be worried about that anymore. And Jesus has the unmitigated gall to look at Simon Peter and say, hey man, you're about to be sifted. You're going to have some things that's going to be shaken out of you. You're going to be tossed about as if you have no bearings in this life whatsoever. But do not get so stressed about sifting that you don't forget the final product because the finished product is that the chaff that is a part of your life, it ain't good for a thing at all. And by the time the sifting season is over, it's going to fly away and you won't have to worry about that anymore. I'm looking at some people at this church tonight who can testify, man, I know what a sifting season feels like. I know what sifting looks like. I've had to have some sifting take place in my life, but I'm here as a testimony that if God be for you, not even a sifting season can be against you. Man, I got a little while. Meet me at point three, point E flat. All right, watch this. Here it is. He says, I want you to understand, Simon, that you're going to have to deal with a sifting season. Did you catch it, Pastor Wallace? He doesn't call him Peter in Luke 22 like he did in Mark chapter 16. He goes back to his pre-conversion name. He goes back to his hood name. Yeah, he goes back to his his name before he got in relationship with Jesus because he understands that over the next several hours, uh, Peter ain't going to act like Peter. Yeah, yeah, because he's on again, off again. Peter ain't going to act like Peter. He's going to have more simonic tendencies than he does have Peteristic proclivities. And somebody tonight can testify, you know what it means to have that war of two individuals within you. Come on, you are a saint of the living God. But is there anybody in here who can testify as redeemed as you are? You can be ratchet every now and then. I need somebody in here to testify as delivered as you are in some areas. You still need the Lord to work on some other areas. I'm going to preach until I get everybody to testify. I mean, I do some stuff real, real good in the church, but there's some stuff. Don't come with me with that because I will tell you exactly what you need to hear. On that night, he's going to cut a brother's ear off. On that night, he's going to deny Jesus three times. On that night, he's going to cuss a little sister out. On that night. And I'm looking tonight at some good Christians. Who can cut and cuss with the best of them. I'm looking tonight at some good Christians who can testify. Eh, Peter ain't the only one walking with Jesus with a switchblade. Hallelujah. Simon. Yeah. Simon. Satan has asked to sift you like we, may I suggest, church family, in the first place, when we look at this text tonight, it seems to submit to me that um, all of us are going to have some sifting seasons to show up. Watch this. Despite our placement in the congregation. Catch it. Uh, we'll all have some sifting seasons. Despite our placement in the congregation. Look again. The New International Version says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you. Like we, King James Version says, Simon, Satan has, has, has desired. Um, to sift you. When New, New Revised Standard Version says, Simon, hey man, Satan has demanded to sift, watch, all of you. So the inference is he may have called Simon's name, but he's talking to all the disciples. 
that he said to Simon, it's going to come your way. You're going to have to deal with the brunt of much of this. But this is not just for you. It's about all of y'all. You're going to be the leader. Check out what happens on Pentecost Sunday. You're going to stand up once you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You're going to preach one, th one sermon and 3,000 souls are going to get saved. Lord's going to use you to build the church in the first part of the early church's life. But you need to know that it's not just you who's going to have to endure trials of many types. All of you sitting in front of me are going to be like a sheep that are going to be like sheep that are scattered when the shepherd gets struck. Everybody is going to get sifted. And I suspect I need to help the saints of God to understand that it doesn't matter who you are, how spiritual you may profess to be, how much you love the Lord with your whole heart. There will be some seasons in your life where sifting shows up and you cannot shake it. I know, I know, I know you're one of God's prized possessions. You're saved to the bone and sanctified to the marrow, but you will have to be sifted at some point in your life. All of us, last time I checked your Bible, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But don't stop there because the Bible says that the Lord delivers them out of them all. Is there anybody in here who's read your Bible? You heard Jesus say, in this world, whoo, you will have tribulation. But he didn't stop there, did he? He said, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. I need to talk to somebody in here who knows good and well that afflictions and tribulations show up in everybody's life. As a matter of fact, for the last two years, it didn't matter how saved you were, all of us had to deal with this pandemic. All of us sitting up in here with a mask on. All of us have had to deal with social distancing over the years. All of us had to sit in the house for a time when we didn't want to be there. It was no one who was excluded. Everybody was included and sifting will show up in everybody's life. Yeah. Deacon, you're going to get sifted. Choir member, love y'all, got great voices, but you're going to be sifted. Ushers. Come on, greet us and welcome us into the Lord's house. You're going to have to get sifted. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you try to hide, call yourself a pew member, whatever that is. You're going to get sifted. You're going to get sifted. Preacher, you know good and well you got to be sifted every now and then. These seasons show up in all of our lives. And the question is, can you still hold fast to your profession of faith when you're going through the worst predicament and season of your life? Can you still declare that God is good when nothing about your situation reveals the same? Can you still lift your voice like a trumpet in Zion and declare that the Lord will make a way somehow when you can't find a way being made at all? Can you still say he's a healer when the doctor gives you the word news of your life. Can you still believe that he's a provider when you don't know how you're going to meet the end of the month's bills, let alone the front top of the month? Somebody in here needs to help me preach on a Tuesday night and testify. Life ain't fair. Life will knock the life out of you. But is there anybody who can testify? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change come is there a witness right over in here who can still testify that even if weeping endures for a night you still believe joy is coming in the morning I need a witness in the building tonight who can testify I love the Lord I'm a part of the Lord's church and sifting shows up Simon, Satan's trying to take all y'all out, trying to make of null effect everything I've put in you over the last three years. He's trying to ruin your witness. He's trying to put something on you to see if he can shut down all that shouting you do on Sunday. I want to see if I, if I put this thorn in your flesh. Will you still be able to say uh, that his grace is sufficient for me? And I'll rather glory 
in my infirmities because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I need to find some ride or die saints in here. I need to find the folk who've learned how to endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I need to find the folk who've lived through some seasons of life and you can testify even though it ain't always pretty. The God you serve promise never to leave you nor forsake you and the very fact that he's with you lets you know that you can still have joy on the inside. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy no matter how much hell I'm catching along the way. I need to find the folk who can testify I'm broke but the Lord will provide. I need to find some folk who said I'm sick but he's still wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. With his stripes I'm healed. I need to find the folk who still know he'll put broken hearts back together. Anybody who know he's still the lifter of bowed down heads. I need to find the folk who can testify Got to be sifted despite my placement in the congregation. Can't run from this one. Can't hide from this. Come on, this is the gospel for grown folk now. You can't run from this. Can't hide from this. You can't have a pity party just because things aren't going your way. And act like God is not good because your situation is not good. In all things, God works it, works it, works it together for the good of them. Who love him and are called according to his purpose. I submit tonight. But all of us have to be sifted despite our placement in the congregation. Can I push it a bit farther? Because I likewise want to suggest to us tonight, Pastor Brian, that, that uh, we have to be sifted despite our penchant towards supplication. Despite our placement in the congregation, but likewise, despite our penchant, P-E-N-C-H-A-N, that's our A-E-N-T, that's our leaning, our inclination towards supplication. Um. Because cause there's somebody who's heard everything I've already said, and they're saying, but you don't know about my prayer life. You don't know how close I am to Jesus. You don't know. We've been walking together for a long time. Okay, walk with me from the table where Jesus is seated with his disciples, and let's go to the Mount of Olives. Bible says they leave. That, uh, that table, they sing a hymn, they go to the Mount of Olives, they go to a place called Gethsemane. That's the Lord's praying ground. He tells the disciples, sit at the front, front mouth of the garden. He takes Peter, James, and John a little farther into the garden, and he goes a stone's throw away from them. But before he does, he says, sit here with me for an hour and pray. He says, I'm about to go into one of the roughest few hours of my life. I need somebody to pray with me. I need you to pray. And uh, uh, they, <laughs> they can't hang. No, they, they, can't, they can't deal with it. As a matter of fact, they're going to go to sleep shortly after the prayer meeting begins. They are good Baptists. They are going to sleep as soon as the prayer meeting begins. Um, and so they go to sleep. Jesus goes in, goes in farther into the garden. And the Bible says that it sweat like drops of blood pouring from his brow. This is an intensified prayer meeting. And listen to his prayer. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thy will be done. Y'all know the prayer. Praise God for you. Uh, yeah, that, that's his prayer. He prays that for an hour. It's an intensified prayer. So intense is it that sweat like drops of blood pouring from his brow. He is now falling there before the Lord begging that the, that the, 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 the assignment can be removed. There can be a shift in the assignment. The weight is on him now. The pressure is before him now. Oh, some of us know when the rubber meets the road, you want, you want to see if there can be a shift in the assignment when when circumstances get weighty when the surgery is pending you want to know can there be a shift is there another way we can get through this thing is there another when 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 you have to deal with the dying family member you want to know is there another way for us to get through this do I have to 
to go through this. Come on, miracle worker, you can do this. Come on, God, I know you're able. There's nothing too hard for you. Have you ever had to pray and the prayer didn't get answered the way you wanted to get to answer? And that's Jesus. Nevertheless, not my will be, but thy will be done. He goes, finds those brothers asleep. He say, come on, man, wake up, wake up. Don't, I don't want you to fall into temptation. I know that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I need you to wake up. Pray with me for another hour. He goes back a little bit farther into the garden. When he does, he falls on his knees <laughs> and he prays the same prayer. Father, if it's possible. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I don't know if anybody in here beside me has ever had to pray the same prayer more than once. I don't know if you've ever had to go to God on behalf of your, your family member, your loved one, or your own self on multiple occasions. I, I don't know where that erroneous doctrine showed up in the church preachers where they told us if you don't, if you go to God more than once about the same thing, you got a lack of faith. That ain't Bible. If Jesus prays the same prayer three times as in recorded scripture, surely you and I going to have to pray some prayers multiple times. Is there anybody in here ever had to pray for them children multiple times? The same situation. Anybody ever had to pray about your finances on repeated occurrences? Anybody ever have to ask the Lord to get you straight before you go in that job so you don't tell anybody off? Somebody can testify you've had to pray the same prayer more than once. He prays for another hour. He goes back, finds those brothers asleep. Oh my. They're sleeping again. I get it. I get it. It's been a long day. If I had time, I'd walk you through all they've had to go through with Jesus since they sat down at that dinner table. They've been enjoying themselves and John's gospel says he gives them expanded teaching from chapter 13 all the way to chapter 16 of John's gospel. He's teaching them after he has eaten with them and not only did they have the lavish Passover meal with lamb and bread, they had wine and then Jesus gave them another glass of wine to have the last of the Lord's Supper with them. And you know how you are after you've had bread, lamb, and wine. I'll wait for your amens. I don't have to do anything till tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Is there anybody in here who can testify? You can get sleepy after all that has gone down in your circumstance. You can get weary. They're asleep. He wakes them up again. He goes back into the garden another time. And when he goes back, he prays the same prayer. I like this. I like this. The assignment doesn't change. The will of God does not change. But God changes Jesus in the midst of the experience. Your Bible says, Matthew, Luke, and, and Matthew, Mark, and Luke say that angels came and strengthened him. Ooh, church folk don't know when to shout. That's one. Thank you, Pastor Brown. The, the church folk don't know when to shout. I just gave you good reason to turn over that wooden purple bench you're sitting on right now. And some of y'all just sitting there like, what? I need you to hear what I just said. After that third hour of prayer, after he's praying the exact same prayer, needing the weight to be lifted, your Bible says that the assignment doesn't change, but he gets assistance in the midst of the assignment. Angels came and ministered to him. Angels came and strengthened strengthen him. Is there anybody in church tonight who can testify he may not change the assignment but he will change you in the midst thereof. I need some people in here who've had to go through the roughest circumstances of your life but you found out he'll give you strength to keep on walking. Strength to keep on moving. Strength to keep on going. I need to find some folk who said I didn't like the situation but I'm so glad he gave me strength to endure. Strength for today. Right hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And I like this church because I told you this is not just the sifting of Simon. It's the sifting of the saints. And it seems to be the sifting of the Savior. Even Jesus himself had to deal with this sifted situation. And that's why the Hebrew writer said he's at all points tempted. 
like we are yet without sin. That's why I like Jesus. I can trust him because he's been through some stuff. I can't trust these super saints who ain't never had to go through nothing. I need to talk to somebody who's had to endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus Christ and you came out on the other side of it stronger, wiser, better. I need somebody to testify. I had to go through it, but I'm better as a consequence of it. Pray your way out of this one. Some stuff you got to go through. I didn't come with, with, with the sophomoric gospel tonight. I came to tell somebody on the other side of Easter, you got to go through some stuff. Not going to be able to slip away from it. Not going to be able to ignore it. Not going to be able to act as if it's not bothering you. The weight's going to be on your shoulders. And the question is, can you trust him in the valley like you trust him on the mountain? I need to find three folks somewhere in each section who can testify. He's not just the God of the mountain. He's likewise the God of the valley. Anybody ever had him walk you whoo, through the valley of the shadow of death? Anybody have to have a, va a visit to the valley and you can testify? He's the God of the mountains and of the valley. I submit tonight. You and I will have to be sifted. Despite our placement in the congregation, I'm almost done. You and I have to be sifted. Despite our penchant towards supplication with your prayer warrior self. You're the prayer warrior. Yes, you are. <laughs> and certain prayers, God reserves the right to respond with no. Certain prayers, God reserves the right to say, no, 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 you need this. Because what happens in this is not only going to bless you, it's going to affect other folk watching you. If Jesus had been able to get away from that bitter cup of sorrow and suffering, you and I wouldn't be able to sit here as saved saints in the sanctuary. I need somebody to thank God that he had to go through it so you and I could lift up our hands and testify. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I'm, I'm closing the message, but it's, it's a beautiful text in my opinion. It's a text that teaches us that we have to be sifted despite our placement in the congregation. We have to be sifted despite our penchant towards supplication. But can I please give you some good news? Somebody been waiting on good news. It seemed like I've been given a whole lot of not so good news tonight. Can I please close the little message with a little good news? I need you to know that every sifting season has a point of termination. Yes, Lord. I said, it doesn't matter where you are in the congregation. It doesn't matter about your areas of supplication. I need you to get happy if you're the only one on your road to get happy. When I tell you that every sifting season has a point of termination. Can we get back to that table for the last several minutes of this little message? Because when you get to that table, you will hear the Lord Jesus saying again, listen here. He's trying to take you out. Satan is trying to have at you. He's trying to get you and make sure that he makes your witness of null effect. He's trying to push you to your point of saying, what's the use? I don't feel like doing this Jesus thing anymore, but I prayed for you. <laughs> I prayed for you, Simon, and I prayed that your faith would not fail. I prayed that when you would turn back, you would strengthen your brothers and sisters. I don't know if you heard what I said. If they turned the microphone off, but it seemed to me there should have been a better response when I just gave you the best news of the entire message. It seemed dire. It seemed frustrating for Jesus to say that Satan, the accuser of the brethren, Satan, our common enemy, was going to have at that old Peter. He was going to sift him like wheat. But if you stop right there, you'll think all oh, hope is lost that I preach a message of futility and frustration. But if you keep reading, Jesus says, but I prayed for you. And I didn't pray that you wouldn't have a bad day. No, no. I didn't pray that things would always go according to your plan. I did not pray that you would be so happy with life that you just glide to glory. Ain't nobody gliding to glory. No, I prayed that in the midst of your frustration, in the midst of your futility, in the midst of the fire,
fire of your circumstance, your faith won't fail. Woo. I didn't spend all this time with you just to make you happy, happy, happy. I've been spending time with you to make you holy, holy, holy. And somebody in here ought to help me close this message and begin to testify. One thing I've learned about God through the trying of my circumstances is that if I can hold on to his word, he'll strengthen my faith and I'll be able to trust him even when I can't trace him. I need 12 people in every section to help me close now and begin to testify that God is still able to strengthen you in the inner person so that you will have faith to endure. And here my brothers and sisters is where it gets good. He said I pray that your faith will not fail because somebody knows that if you're going to live this life you got to have some faith. Yeah. He said I pray that your faith will not fail. Last time I checked your Bible faith is still the substance of things hoped for and it's the evidence of things not seen. Last time I checked your Bible. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Last time I checked your Bible, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. And is there a faith walker at the St. James Church, St. John Church tonight who can testify that I may not have a whole bunch of all the stuff, but one thing I surely do have is faith in that man named Jesus. I believe he's a miracle worker. I believe there's nothing too hard for him. And so I trust him with everything that is within me. He said, I pray that your faith would not fail. And watch this. And when when you turn back and when you're converted and when you get past this sifting season I want you to look back and strengthen your brothers I want you to strengthen your sisters I want you to strengthen the folk who watched you go through and now they've got to go through it too and can I find 12 people in here who can look back over the sifting seasons of your life and now that you've gone through it you can lift up both of your hands and begin to tell somebody else if he did it for me he can do it for you. Is there a witness in this church tonight who can help me close this message and begin to testify? The God I serve has enough power to bring your sifting season to termination. And when he does it, you may as well go ahead and celebrate him. You may as well go ahead and clap your hands and open your mouth and tell him thank you. I need somebody who's gone through some stuff, who knows knows what it means to have some rough moments in your life to go ahead and testify it hadn't always been easy I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some lonely nights but when I look around and think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days so I won't complain anybody still say God's been good to me he's been real good to me more than this world would ever be. He dries uh, all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So excuse me if I offend you because I'm loud all while church is going on. But I keep getting these flashbacks of the ways he's made and the mountains he's moved. And so I got to say thank you Lord. I won't complain. But your testimony is not just about celebration. It's it's about edification. It's good to celebrate, but you need to tell somebody if he helped me to be a single parent, he'll help you to be a single parent. If he helped me to pay these bills, he'll help you to pay these bills. If he helped me to rear these children, he'll help you to rear these children. Won't he do it? I need a witness in this sanctuary who can testify if he did it for me he'll do it for you he's no respecter of persons I'm trying to close the message but I see some testimonies all over this church tonight I wish we had time to pass the microphone but is there anybody in church tonight who's watched him make a way who's watched him give you peace who watched him give you joy who's watched him rock you in the cradle of his arm well I need you to testify don't you keep this to yourself cause somebody on your row needs to know he's able to do exceeding 
abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. Won't he do it? I'm trying to sit out a while, but every time I think about it, the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. I want to thank God for saving me. Thank God for delivering me. Thank God for making a way. Thank God for wiping my tears. Thank God for lifting up my head. Thank God for giving me joy. And this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I said say so. I did not say look so. I didn't even say clap so. I said let the redeemed. Oh, 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 Lord, say so. Hadn't he been good? Hadn't he made a way? Hadn't he fought some battles? Shout yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I know the Lord will make a way. Won't he? Simon, hey man, Satan has asked, desired, demanded to sift you like wheat, trying to take you out, trying to make your witness of null effect, trying to put something in your life to make you turn around and walk out on God. Don't trip over that, man. Don't trip over that. That's going to happen in everybody's life. All of us about to deal with some of that. But I prayed for you. And I pray that your faith would not fail. I pray that you take a licking and keep on ticking. Come on, talk to me. I pray that you would endure it because there's something on the other side of it. And when you get over there, when you get past this stuff, after tonight, after resurrection, after I show up when you go fishing, walking away from me like you know you should not have, after I ask you if you love me and you say, yes, Lord, you know I love me. Once we get to Pentecost Sunday and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, stand up and preach your sermon about Jesus and strengthen your brothers and sisters. That's what somebody has to do when you go to work tomorrow. Strengthen your sisters and brothers. That's what somebody's got to do when you get back to your neighborhood tonight and tomorrow. Strengthen your brothers and sisters. Don't make sense to go through all this church and we can't help somebody along the way. This world is going crazy and we need some Christians, some saints who can testify God is still in complete control. I don't care what, what Putin does. I don't care how bad the war gets. I don't care how rough your circumstance may be. God is still in control. And he's able to work miracles in the lives of those who will trust him. I pray that your faith would not fail. I just came tonight for pastor, saints, and friends to tell you a little bit about the sifting of the saints. you my brothers and my sisters tonight after we have heard the word of the Lord and God has spoken to all of us collectively and at the same time he's spoken to us individually we offer you tonight God's perfect provisional promises come ye anybody and everybody who is heavy laden and burdened and God guarantees tonight he will give you rest. 
perfect, personal, provisional promises. If you're here tonight and you have not yet accepted this Jesus we speak of as your Lord and personal Savior, it's nothing to be ashamed of because all of us who have were in that seat at one point or another. But thanks be to God that we had an opportunity to hear his word and we came to him just as we were. And I want to report tonight that he loved us so much that he didn't leave us the way he found us. This opportunity is yours tonight if you have not accepted the wonderful, miraculous gift of salvation. Then number two, there might be some here who's saying, Preacher, I've accepted that gift. I know what you're talking about. God knows me and I know God. But for whatever reason during this particular season that you are not part of a family that you can call home. I'm not talking just about a place you can go. I'm speaking about a place where you can go and grow. You need to be connected to not a building, but you need to be connected to a body. If my eyes don't fool me tonight, there are at least seven or eight churches here tonight that are represented. But since we're here at St. John's Church, why not St. John's? If you're here and you fall into that category, come. My sister, my brother, anybody, everybody. The doors to my master's house are open. Will you come tonight? Amen. You may be seated. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's give God some praise. Amen. The sifting of the saints. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Cosby, for coming and blessing us tonight. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for being a part of this, our revival. Can I tell y'all that Dr. Cosby is a preacher's preacher? Amen. Um, as evidenced by the pastors that are here today, all the pastors and the preachers that are here tonight, would y'all just stand on your feet just so that, so that uh, folks can see you? Amen. All the pastors and preachers, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, well, Pastor Brian is here. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for coming. Uh, uh, Dr. Cosby will be with Pastor Brian tomorrow night and Thursday night over at the Bethlehem Baptist Church in Roselle, New Jersey. Amen. And I'm just happy, glad that Dr. Cosby decided to walk through uh, St. John's first on his way to Bethlehem. Amen. 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 Well, my brothers and sisters, it's time to get ready to go. We have been revived. Would you do me a favor and stand on your feet as we prepare to leave this place, but never from his presence? Let me say this. Um, there are a bunch of churches that are here represented tonight, a bunch of pastors representing their churches. Um, but I got a shout out, a very special church of folks that I see here tonight from People's Baptist Church in the great city of North New Jersey. Amen. Thank you all for your presence. I see you all. I, I see you all. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to uh, I also want to give a special shout out to uh, Sister Childress. Mother Childress is here with us tonight. Amen. And we thank God for you. Amen. Very instrumental in, in being with us when we first brought Dr. Cosby in. And so I'm grateful for your presence tonight. Amen. And thank God for you. Uh, do me a favor if you can and if you will, brothers and sisters, get a gift in your hand. What we do here at St. John's is we give our gifts on our way out the door. Amen. And if you can and will, I would appreciate if you get a gift in your hand. Everybody that can and will, if you could just share a gift of $20, I'd appreciate that. Um, if not, give whatever you can. Get a, give whatever you can. Give whatever you can. Give whatever you can. Amen. And prepare that gift now. Prepare that gift now. We're going to pray. Amen. And then we're going to get ready to leave. Amen. 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 If you, if you got your gifts while the trustees are getting a basket, if you got your gifts, Amen. Hold your gift up if you don't mind and let us pray. God, we're grateful and we thank you for every gift and every giver. We pray that no one go wanting for supporting ministry. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. All right, y'all, we're getting ready to leave. We're getting ready to leave. Where's, where's, where the trustees at? They, they by the door already?
Okay, they're by the door already. All right. Listen, my brothers and sisters, thank you again for sharing with us. There are other ways to give. They're on the screen, other ways to give. If you don't have money, you can give Zelle. You can give Simple Give. You can give Givelify. You can give Cash App. You can give however you're going to give. Amen? Amen. We thank God for that. Cash App says, um, hmm, St. John's. What's that say? I can't read it. St. John's Scotch Plain, that's what it say? Dollar sign. Thanks, St. John's Scotch. All right, St. John's got Scotch. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, one and all. All right. Amen. Everyone, we're going to be exiting on this side and on that side. Amen. Let us look to the Lord as we prepare to leave this place. God, we're grateful and we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this time of revival. Thank you for this preacher that came and blessed us along this way. God, we pray that you pour back into him everything that he has given out to us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that when we leave this place, that we'll never leave your presence. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let every heart say amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Thank you.